Hello, uh, this video would be to support your learning on transitional metals, its definition and the exceptions. Uh, that would be our third learning outcome under the PLU. Okay, let's dive straight to it. Now, um, in this presentation, I will show you guys a few definitions of transitional metal and at the end of it, we would pick the best. Now, please understand carefully, three definitions, we're going to look at the weakness of the definitions just to show you why the definition that we would conclude as the best is the one that you have to remember. Okay, don't uh, please don't get confused at the end of it. I, I, I know some students who remember all three definitions thinking all three definitions would be acceptable. Okay, right, first definition. So as you could see here, the first definition is the easiest, but it's the easiest, but it is, oh, let me pick the brush again. It is easiest, but definitely not the best. Or what we say as the least useful. So I think the students love this definition because it's the easiest. What is the transition metal? Oh, it's the metal that's found on the D-block. Uh, but it is not entirely true because even though some elements are found on the D-block, they tend to not qualify to be a transition metal. We'll look at that in a bit. Now let's look at the definition two. Now definition two says that it obviously being a D block um, metal, it would um, have an incomplete D subshell, which is also not true because if you look at the list of the elements here, um, scandium, titanium, vanadium, chromium, mangan, iron, also known as ferrum, cobalt, nickel, copper, zinc, but up to nickel qualifies to this definition, but copper and zinc does not. It has full D-block uh, uh, orbitals. The D-block orbitals are completely filled. You can see that it's 10 and it's 10. The rest qualifies. So if you do take definition two, uh, we say that uh, the, the copper and zinc would not qualify to be transitional metal. So um, if we do take this definition, then copper and zinc would become an exception and we would have to decide that copper and zinc is not a transition metal. Now, uh, I, I need you to identify something here, which is the chromium and copper. I need you to realize how the um, electrons have been filled up um, in the orbitals. So the usual rule, the alpha rule says that we fill in the lower orbitals before we fill up and we all know that the 4s orbital is slightly lower than the 3e orbital so usually we would fill up and pair up the 4s orbital before we do the 3d orbital filling um, chromium and copper please take note our exceptions um, we do not have to explain it uh, but to uh, make it simple um, this is how it exists and for some reason it is a lot more stable in this arrangement compared to the other arrangement. So you have to know that these are the exceptions to the up bar rule. So you just have to remember it as an exception. You do not have to explain it, but if you, uh, for your own understanding, we remember it as um, it provides a certain stability that makes it uh, more possible to exist in this way than the other way. Okay, moving on. Um, oh, yeah, this is the exceptions as just explained. Um, 24, this is the usual way. If we follow the up bar rule, but this is not how it exists, this is how it exists. Same goes to copper. This is how we should be filling it if we follow the up bar. But since it is an exception, this is what we would follow. Special stability. So the details of to what did they mean by special stability is beyond the scope of your syllabus. Okay, moving on. Third definition. So now we're looking at that third definition. It has at least one ion with a com with an incomplete D subshell, which means the element that we listed earlier would go on to become an ion and when it becomes an ion, 
we are looking at an incomplete D subshell. So what's the problem here? Because you're looking at scandium. Scandium forms only a 3 plus ion. We know that. So if you go by this definition, we will have to exclude scandium. So we have to exclude scandium because when scandium forms an ion, there's just no electrons left in the d orbital. It's just completely empty. If you look at the titanium, titanium can qualify. So is vanadium, chromium, manganese, iron, and so on and so forth. So you go down, but zinc is a problem. Zinc is also a problem, just like scandium, except the situation is the opposite. The d orbitals of zinc, when it becomes an ion, is completely full, full. So there's nothing here. Um, there's no blank space here. There's, you can't just put in another electron here. So scandium and zinc is, and uh, we have to exclude, um, if we take up the definition three as the best definition. So now we have looked at three definitions. The first definition is the easiest definition. So I'll quickly recap before we pick the best. The first definition is the easiest but the least useful, we define transition methyl as an element that's found on the D block of the table. Um, transitional methyl 2 definition 2 says that transition metal is any element that has an incomplete D subshell. Um, well, if we accept this, then the exception will be copper and zinc because copper and zinc has completely filled up D orbital. So, um, and talked about the exceptions. Now the third definition says that when a transition metal is a met is an element which when it forms an ion, remember it has to form an ion, it will have incomplete D subshell. Okay? So when you say incomplete D subshell, that creates an exception for scandium and zinc. Scandium has completely empty the orbital and zinc has completely filled the orbital. Okay, so moving on. Now that the best definition of the winner, you can select the winner. Three main characteristics of transition metal. They are able to produce different valencies, which means they are able to exist in different oxidation state. A good example is iron. Iron is able to exist as two plus and three plus. They produce colored compounds, so all of those uh, transition metals as we listed has colors to them, which we will look at later to why do they have colors. And they all can act as catalysts, which means they can catalyze um, a particular reaction. They could lower the activation energy. Now, all three criteria are characteristics of transition metal. Scandium and zinc are consistently an exception to all three criteria. They simply do not have the ability to exist in different valencies. They simply do not exist in colors and they do not have any catalytic application, which means they are simply not a catalyst. Therefore, the best definition, as you would be able to choose, would be the third definition, which is transition metal is a metal that has, so this is the winner, that has at least one ion with an incomplete D subshell. Take note of this. Best definition, so it's right down here. Best definition of transition metal. So rem please remember if you are requested to define transition metal in exam, then your answer is transition metal is an element that has at least one ion with an incomplete D subshell. Okay. So oxidation state is another video. Uh, we know that the uh, transition metals are able to exist in a variety of oxidation states. You are, are required to be able to calculate this oxidation state and decide uh, the oxidation number. That's the next video. Um, please go ahead and try some questions. Thank you very much.